burden we can carry and how much difficulties we can go through and how much patience and tolerance we can have. For example, a manufacturer of a car, he knows exactly what he has made, the engine that is in the car, what it is capable of, i.e. for example the speed. The manufacturer, he knows exactly how much the limits can be pushed and same manners how certain parts, how long they will last. And that's certain things in our life that are created by mankind. Okay, so we are aware of something that we create. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us as humans. He's created everything. But for mankind to create certain things is because he's enabled us to do so. By blessing us with this beautiful intellect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this reason has put potential in mankind. Because he's created us, he knows that they can keep the fast of 29 or 30 days for the whole month. He knows that they can stand for Qayyamul Layl and Salatul Taraweeh. He knows they are unable to stay hungry and thirsty. He knows what those things I have made lawful for them and in the state of fasting, which are halal and uh, permissible, he is now close the doors on them. Now we are not able to do so. He knows this because he is all knowing and all hearing and all seeing. He is aware of our situation, remember. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never burden a soul that he cannot bear that burden. And every individual has his own capacity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that this whole month is in reality an exercise. It's a training. It's an exercise for how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to continue to live our lives in accordance, accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah. That's the whole purpose of the month of Ramadan. If we understand the true concept of Ramadan al Karim, why it's being made of an obligatory on us and an obligation upon us as a nation of the Prophet, then the Conclusion is that because of this training that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting us through, if we stay steadfast upon this, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us Jannah. Now it's our choice. Once we've taken this training, do we stay steadfast on it? Do we try to remain on the training that we have been uh, given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or do we choose to refuse and then go back to our old same roots? We, we as a human have been given that free will. Now, the minute Ramadan finishes, we see this with our own eyes. You all see this, we all know this. Nobody's here to point fingers at anybody, nobody's here to judge anybody. But the reality, the matter of the fact is, I'll give you a great example again, once again. When Ramadan Karim was here in Salat al Fajr, we had two rows. We had two rows, or maybe two and a half. And today, there was only five people. Now, we are the same people who were able to come in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stand for an hour and a half after Salatul Isha for Salatul Tarawih. And we are the same people who would then get up for suhoor, sahari, and perform the hajjad, some of us, and also recite the Qur'an. And then we were the same people who were going to work, and we are the same people then who were thirsty and hungry, and so forth. But why is it when the month of Ramadan finishes, then we don't uh, keep steadfast upon the training that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the process that we are going through and have gone through for the entire month. This is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. That I am only training you for a month and now no, you go back to your old tricks. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I, I am training you and you are able to do so because I have created you and I know exactly what you are capable of doing. So what we must learn is when Ramadan is over, why do we rejoice Eid? The reason we rejoice and it's a joyful day for the Muslim Ummah is because we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for enabling us to fast during the month of Ramadan. 
to recite the glorious Quran, to stand up in Qiyamul Layl and Salatul Tarawih, to get up for Tahajjud, for Sahur, to stay hungry, to stay thirsty, and to give charity, and go beyond what we would expect to do uh, in the remaining months of the year. So we are capable of doing because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like I mentioned earlier, has given us the potential. We have the ability to do so. Now it's our duty to stay steadfast upon this. We must understand this. But unfortunately, the, 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 the state of the ummah is it's that we don't take this training of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seriously. You know, when we take this seriously, then I can assure you, and then I'm not assuring you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is assuring us that if you are steadfast upon what I have commanded, and you are striving and struggling, and you are trying your, to your utmost best, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Jannah is made for you. I will enter you into the gardens of paradise. Jannah is not made for the disbelievers. Jannah is made for the believers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there's a system I put in place. You, from, you cannot get from A to cross out A, B, C, and D and get to Z straight away. The alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, etc. Okay, it's a routine. Same thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similarly has told us and commanded us to do certain actions, not just in the month of Ramadan, but throughout our entire life till we have breath and till the soul is within our bodies. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, when the period is over, when it the period, the fasting days are over, what should we do? Then praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say Allah, but Allah is the greatest. You know? Because he has shown you guidance, he has shown me, you. He has he is the one who showed us guidance. He is the one who enabled us to come into the masjid. He enabled, he gave us the tawfiq, the ability to stand salat in, in salat al tarawih to perform our salat, to give charity, okay, to fast, to open the glorious Quran, to make azkar, to make dua, to make supplications. So that's why we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, if it wasn't for you, and if you didn't allow us to do so, then we, were, we are very weak, we cannot do so. You have enabled us to do so. So, Ya Allah, all praise is for you. You glory, glory be to you. Ya Allah, you are the greatest. Why? And then when we show gratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says what? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So you may show gratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you may be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You and I, we as a ummah, we be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one and the ultimate one who allowed us to do so. So this is the reason why this whole Eid al-Fitr becomes a rejoiceful day for the Muslim Ummah. It's not just about wearing new clothes and having food and visiting guests. This is part of the, re the, uh, the rejoiceful day, rejoicing, happiness. Yes, but the matter of the fact that the reality is that we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for showing us guidance. We are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for enabling us to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reconnect with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Reconnect with the glorious Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reconnect with our masajid. Reconnect in making supplication and istighfar and asking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a reconnection. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he enables to reconnect with him, and the Quran, and the Sunnah, and the Masjid, then Allah says, now you must stay steadfast as well for the remaining 11 months and wait for the next Ramadan, if that is destined for us, subhanAllah. So this is the purpose of Ramadan, it's a training. And we must continue this. We must allow ourselves to accept the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and has enabled us and we have the potential to do so. And we have proved that. And this is a living proof for everybody. We have proved that through our actions. May, usually we don't come in the state so long in, after Salat al We leave Salat al we go home, most of us. Majority, everybody goes home. Okay? They can stay in another hour and a half and stand in for 20 rakats, listening to the recitation of the glorious Quran. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's fazl, His grace. We maybe don't even open the Quran and it's on the bookshelf. But in the month of Ramadan, everybody, alhamdulillah, tries. Whether he can, he, he, he can recite the Quran, complete Quran, or even if it's just few verses, he tries. 
Whether he gives charity in the remaining 11 months of in this month, he, he goes beyond his capacity. He, he gives charity. He makes dua. We make dua. We make supplication. And then we stay hungry. You know, all those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made lawful for us when they state of fasting, he now has closed the doors upon us. And we, you know, we pro prove this, that we can do this because Ya Allah, you created us, you know us better, and we know that we can do this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for that reason, he wants us to reconnect with all these things that I've mentioned. That's the purpose and the, the whole, uh, you know, my speech today is brothers, we have to understand and take this training of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran and the Sunnah, especially in the month of Ramadan, what he has guided us through is to stay steadfast and connect, keep connected with that training. And it's not difficult. You are the same people, we are the same people who, like I mentioned earlier, we go to work, we have different responsibilities, drop off school, kids, children, for appointments, shopping, they still were part of our life whilst we were fasting. But yet it did not distract us from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet it did not distract us from opening the Quran. Yet it did not distract us from giving charity. Yet it did not distract us from reading the Salatul Tarawi. Yet it did not distract us from coming to the masjid. So then why should it be that we are distracted the minute the Ramadan al Karim has left us? So this means we are weak. We are allowing this. Because we are allowing this as, as, as mankind, as human. And it's our nature, you know. So in our lives, we must accept the fact that we must be steadfast on anything we carry out as a good action. That's what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us as well. Any good action you do, be it little, but make sure you do it continuously, SubhanAllah. You know, do it continuously. Even if small amount, and in Ramadan we didn't go crazy, we weren't here all night, we weren't opening the Quran. There are those blessed people in the month of Ramadan, they do more better than us. Like from, if we analyze and look at our lifestyle and what we usually do in the 11 months, Alhamdulillah, we bless everybody tries. Well, have we tried? Yes, Allah is going to reward us. Alhamdulillah, He is going to reward us, no doubt in His mercy. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants more for us. Why should we try to uh, why should we have our objective and goal to just stay on one level and try to just go for a three-star hotel when we know there's four, five, six, seven, even though I've not been there, but I know they look good. All right? I know they're better than three and four stars, these seven stars. Trust me. Media, social media, you know. And even though we want to go to a five-star and the Jaja Kram and you go, they say it's a five-star, but we end up in a three-star. <laughs> Allah give them the die as well. You know, so the thing is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why should we just limit it to Ramadan? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give us, He says, I make Jannah for you, and I want you to work as hard as you can, so I may increase your ranks. So don't just look for just the first level, try to attain the highest rank in Jannah. SubhanAllah. That's our objective, Jannah al Firdaus, to achieve that maximum pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He enables us to become. The, the neighbor of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know so why should we just and you should be greedy for it you should be we should be greedy for jannah that's one thing we should be greedy for we all we should be thirsty for it and for us to for this to happen for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this happen for us he's only asking us that the training i've given you in the month of ramadan if you keep steadfast upon that throughout your life then one thing that comes to mind is that if we make every day a Ramadan for us, then the Akhira is a Jannah for us and Akhira is a Eid for us. Now we're rejoicing. We spent 30 days in training, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're happy. That's why we celebrate Eid. But we're only happy for a day. Everybody's back to work more or less tomorrow. And maybe another day, and the schools are back on. Back to normal routine, yeah? So that. Enjoyment is only for a day today. We eat food here, it's only a day, yeah? Because we did 30 days of Ramadan and worship and etc. and work. Hard. Imagine if we made Ramadan that routine every day. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Akhirah will make eat for us every day. Yeah? So, uh, so why should we just stick for one day of eat? Rejoicing and happiness when we could work for better. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, 
This is the whole purpose of the month of Ramadan, my brothers. And unfortunately, we do see, we see, like I mentioned earlier, from two and a half rows, we've come back to five namazis again in Fajr. And it's the same people in the same routine. So if we can do it in the month of Ramadan, Allah knows you can do this throughout your entire life. Okay? It's commitment. To surrender. To submit ourselves in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connect ourselves and remain connected with the Quran. Connect ourselves with Salah. Remain connected with the Salah. Connect ourselves with Masjid. Remain connected with Masjid. Connect ourselves with the orphan and the needy. And remain connected with them. Connect with the supplications and the istighfars. And asking for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remain and, and, and connected with these things. And then I can assure you when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for Jannah for us, subhanAllah. And if we read the Quran, if we, we haven't time for this, you know, I have one in five minutes. And uh, Jannah is such a place. Uh, the brothers that were sat here with me, and you know, when Brother Wasim and Brother Isra and all of you, mashallah, beautiful time, alhamdulillah. You know, I would, all, I would recommend that you sit here to in your lifetime, seriously. Out of uh, 365 days, there's a year, isn't it? 365 uh, days in a year? Okay. Before you perform your Salatul Eid al-Fitr behind the Imam, it is wajib for you to uh, give the Fitrana. If you have already given it, then that's fair dues. If you haven't, before you uh, perform your Salatul Eid al-Fitr, it's wajib. And that's the responsibility of the main person of the house. Even if the child is born for one day, the Fatrana is due upon him as well. And the responsible family member, he is supposed to give a ticket. And the person who's earning, if he's an adult or a teenager, if he's working, if his parents are paying, that's fine. If not, he is obliged to do so. And the Fatrana, uh, are they going to do that? Yeah. Just give it to Shah Sab now if you want to go give your Fatrana there instead of uh, doing that. So if anybody needs to give Fatrana, Shah Sab is Adaba, please uh, give your Fatrana to Fatrana Shah Sab. Uh, as I was mentioning, I forgot where I was. Jannah. Jannah, uh, brother, you, Allah send you, Allah send us all, you connect with Jannah. For Etakaf. So it's such a beautiful experience, 300, that's about 365 days in a year. Imagine taking 9 or 10 days out just for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you taste this, I tell you, those brothers who sit with us, it's not the first time they've sat. When they came the first time, Alhamdulillah, they have come back to the house of Allah. When it was uh, easy for them, they've sat more than once or twice the third timers. Okay? It's why? Because they've tasted it. They've tasted that, you know, 365 days out there and then 10 days. No distraction. No dropping off kids at school. Mm, you know, I might not have to do a bit of washing up and vacuuming because wife's told us, you know, helping out. You know, the nagging of the children, all this, all these distractions, it's all left there. Ten days. And I'm telling you, Mojan, why? You go to a king's house, and if you're a guest at a king's house, he makes sure you are looked after. He makes sure he gives you the best of the food. He makes sure that you are given the best place to sleep. He accommodates you. He's always there for you. He is for your needs. He's there. What do you need? You, you, he's always there. He makes sure his people are helping him out. This is a worldly king that I am referring to. And imagine the king and the true whose sovereignty belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he makes you your his guest, then imagine the, uh, the amount of mercy and kindness and forgiveness and the bounties he gives are unimaginable. Allah. You cannot describe them. Yeah? ये <laughs> Allah, <laughs> 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 <
अल्लाह तबारक वाली आप साथियों को सलामत रखे आप आते हैं आप हमारी तरफ देखते हैं मुस्कराते हैं इमरान साहब मुस्करा रहे आपका मुस्कराना मुझे बहुत पसंद है हाँ जी नाम लेता हूँ सब आप हमारे लिए अजीज हैं सब जितने हैं क्योंकि अल्लाह तबारक वाली के हम सब बंदे हैं आकाल सलातम के सब उम्मती हैं और हमने इन हम सब ने जन्नत जाना है हम सब ने जन्नत जाना है और अकाल सलातम को किसी को जहन में रहने भी नहीं देंगे फरमाएंगे यहाँ गुनागार नेको कार की तो परवाह नहीं है ना नेको कार की तरफ तो रुख भी नहीं होगा ना जजर साहब क्योंकि उनको पता है ये तो जा रहे हैं सरकार की नजर होगी तो गुनागारों की तरफ होगी कि हम इन गुनागारों की शिफात करें इन्होंने कुछ नहीं किया हुआ फरमाया मैं आज शिफात करने वाला हूँ तो ये भी कितनी बड़ी वॉट ऑफ ब्लेसिंग ऑफ अल्लाह सुबहान इज दिन टू द्रदर्स इन आई नो दिगेस्ट ने इस पर दीदार अल्लाह सुबहान What the biggest thing, two things that are more dear and should be more dear, and the reasons that we will enter paradise is two. Remember one thing. Is, let's take this message back with you. Is one the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? The what? Mercy of Allah Subhanahu. And number one, Allahu Akbar. The intercession of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are blessed. This and there's other bounties, but these and these two things we hold dearly. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. the charity of carried out the good actions we have carried out and tried like we are sat here and rejoicing wearing good clothes and we are in a happy mood we're not miserable may allah subhanahu wa taala unite us all in jannatul firdaus where we get to see our beautiful wives where we get to see the rivers of milk where we get to drink from the river of honey where we get to drink from the blessed hand of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kosar where we get to see these beautiful fruits of jannah where we just sit down on our thrones and on the horun ain i sing in songs from you are for us and we are for you you know i mentioned this to brother irfan was was this is filming me yeah and he pushed up it <laughs> He said, "Is that really going to happen?" I said, "I'll give you the evidence. They're going to only be praising Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They're going to be saying, 'Allah has made you for us and made us for you, Subhanallah.' Now, brother, forget these uh, worldly, this worldly, uh, this kufar on social media. They spill. They're nothing. They're nothing. Allah says, 'If I reveal the beauty of one poor in this world, right, it would have illuminated the whole earth. And if I reveal the beauty of one poor in this world, right, people will go mad.'" They go crazy, yeah. Allah's promised us, brothers. We've got this all waiting there for us. And I say, Ya Allah, we take us. Yeah, I'm waiting. <laughs> We're without stress free. I say, Sam, stress free. I'm telling you, that's the place we want to go to. Forget this social media or oh, this one. She's nice. She's astaghfirullah. Oh no, no, brother. They're nothing. They're filth. Allah, what He has made halal for you is the only thing that's good for you. And what He has kept in Jannah, no eye has witnessed, no tongue has tasted, and no ear has heard, and no human mind can comprehend. That's why, my brothers, Jannah is made for the believers, and we want to strive and make it to Jannah. Eternity, yar, no sickness, no envy, no jealousy, no old one age. You know, there's so many things. You. I, when I think of this, I can't even go on. I just say, Ya Allah, just take me right now, you know. But this is what we should pray. Allah, my dear, Allah, Ya Allah, give us Jannah. Because when we pray for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Ya Allah, enter into the garden of Jannah. You know what Jannah says? Ya Allah, enter him into me. Allah. And when we say Ya Allah, protect us from the fire of hell, the fire of hell says Ya Allah, keep him away from me. Subhanallah. And these blessings are made. Uh, and three minutes have been over. I'm so sorry. I was. Getting so passionate about my speech and it's Eid day, but I know we've got all things to do. But brothers, this is your masjid, house of Allah. Keep connected, keep connected with the Quran, keep steadfast, and try to improve ourselves in our lives. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala accept everyone's accept uh, 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 efforts throughout the globe, throughout the Muslim Ummah. Allah have His mercy. Allah take away those difficulties, hardshipness from all the Muslims, especially those who are oppressed in Palestine, in Kashmir, in Iraq, in Libya, in Chechnya, in Bosnia, in Rohingya, in Burma. Era, you know, but everywhere, wherever they are, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala make it easy for us, and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala enable them also to enjoy Eid like we are today, without uh, being brutally, you know, uh, physically, mentally, you know, uh, disturbed or you know, abused. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala accept everything that we have done. Allah Tabaarak Wa Taala, and I'm sorry if I didn't speak too much Urdu. The whole purpose today was announced that it will be in English because of the youth. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, sab saathiyon ko jitne hamare bazaar fort hoge hain. 
اللہ تبارک تعالیٰ ان کو جنت میں آلہ مقام اللہ فرمائے جو رہتے ہیں اللہ سے دے انہیں متحجی سے بچائے اور جب یہ بھی مرے خاتمہ ایمان پر ہوئے ہم بھی مرے ہمارا خاتمہ ایمان پر فرمائے اللہ تبارک تعالیٰ پوری امت مسلمہ پر احسان و فضل و کرم فرمائے اگر دوران گفتگو مجھ سے کوئی غلطی ہو گئی ہے رب کی بات ہمیں بھی معافی کا طلبگار ہوں آپ سے بھی معافی کا طلبگار ہوں تو اب نماز عید الفطر ادا کی جائے گی اور اس کے طریقہ کار دو رکعت نماز عید الفطر واجب چھے تکبیروں کے اس ٹو رکعت اس واجب اس ایکسٹینڈیڈ ویس سکس تکبیرز دی فرس ٹائم امام زونے ریز اس ہنس تو اس ایئر لوگز ہل فسل اس ہنس یو آل ری سبحانک اللہ اکتو ولا الہ غیرو دن دی امام صاحب اس زونے ریز اس ہنس اگین تو اس ایئر لوگز بہت ہی ویل ڈراب دیس ہنس بائی ہی سائی one and then two and on the third time he will fasten his hands okay recite the surah fatiha surah and a verse of the verses of the quran complete the rakat second rakat as usual surah fatiha a surah or verses of the quran and before he goes into ruku he will raise his hands again to his earlobes but dropping them on his side allah akbar allah but three times on the fourth time he will go in to ruku after that inshallah the khutbah will be given then supplication will be made in the end safiya kari